Hey guys, welcome to today's podcast episode. And I've got Lauren, and uh, she's actually a digital entrepreneur. She has time, location, financial freedom, and I'm really happy to have her on. She she's the founder and CEO of Selfhood, which is a cutting edge learning organization that empowers teams and individuals to meet, explore, and integrate more of themselves. And she's got a lot of experience. I'm really happy to have individuals such as Lauren on the show. So welcome, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. Yeah. Briefly introduce yourself, your background story, and I'm excited to dive into the conversations. Same. So hi, everyone. I'm Lauren. I am someone who would describe myself as still exploring both personally and professionally. So in terms of professionally, I have certification in facilitation, coaching, hypnotherapy, something called neuro-linguistic programming. But the bulk of my career experience was in the corporate world, so specifically brand strategy. So 18 months ago, I left my career as director of brand and culture at an agency in Toronto to found Selfhood, which is, as Chris mentioned, it's a learning organization that really does two core things. First is open up the conversations we are having about identity. And second, supporting organizations, leaders, teams, and individuals in actually exploring and meeting and understanding more of their identity. Yeah, really fascinating intro. And I, I recently had a podcast guest talk about the power of hypnotherapy and NLP. What's interesting is this idea of identity. And so basically, you you have a UK-based background. Looks like you're biracial, you're mother and father, and you travel around. So talk about this identity. Do you ever, being an outsider, trying to assimilate, trying to fit in all these different influences, location, cultural, and creating a strong identity? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. And in a way, it comes back to why I have the company I have. People say you always built the thing that you needed the most. So yeah, you know, that I'm originally from the UK, currently yeah, living in Canada, although moving around, heading to Portugal next month. And identity is such a funny topic because often when I tell people what I do, people either instantly get it or they don't. They're not really sure. Like when you say identity, what do you mean? People are like, are you talking about gender identity? Are you talking about identity politics? And what's so interesting is that so many people believe they can opt out of the conversation regarding identity, almost like they forget that they have their own identity politics. Whereas for me, growing up mixed race in amazing white and black families, I was constantly being faced with that question. Who am I? Like, where do I fit? Why does my mom look different to me? Why does my dad look different to me? And so identity is something I couldn't not think about. But what's interesting is that during my experience navigating it, struggling with it, there is very little information really and truly out there or practical ways for people to start to integrate or explore their own identity. Again, my own identity is 100% why I do what I do, but I think it's also to your point about being a digital nomad because I've done the work of really understanding who I am at my core and first and foremost, belonging to myself outside of my labels, whether it's an entrepreneur, whether it's a uh, CEO, whether it's successful, I've learned how to, to be with myself. It means I can then exist and be comfortable in a number of different places. And it's not going to trigger me in the same way, because in a way, by exploring my identity, I've been able to release a lot of my identities. And by doing so, it means I can show up and enjoy being in so many different spaces and then just seeing that as a way to help me meet different versions of myself and aspects of myself that perhaps I wouldn't have explored in other places. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful because there's one segment cohort that resonates. So for example, me, were my parents, first generation immigrants, I was born and raised here. They chose to set their roots in America and uh, in the deep South, the Bible Belt state of Texas, pretty much I grew up around mostly all white people. And what's interesting is I, my other cohort, the American born Chinese and their parents were very strong in their identity and they really foster these cultural values to their kids. And there's this new term that I was 
recently heard about is this cultural confidence. Like you're confident in who you are. And, and like my parents, they always just told me to act white and be white. That was the standard. And so for me, I always feel like I'm an outsider. Like everywhere I go, I do not fit in. So I'm like basically always alone and, and I have to learn how to fit in and all of that. So how do you, how does someone develop a strong identity that when it's not, when it wasn't really emphasized to them? Thank you for sharing that, Chris. And like, I identify with a lot of your experiences, that idea of almost always feeling a bit like an outsider and feeling like you have to fit, like you have to assimilate, like you have to abandon parts of yourself in order to fit in with others. And it has an impact. Like I personally have struggled a lot with mental health, like anxiety and depression is often linked to this constant performing and abandoning that we do. It's just, again, because people don't talk about identity enough, it's not had enough awareness raised to it. In terms of your question of like, how do you, how do you start to build that stronger sense of self? How do you get comfortable being yourself in different rooms? For me, it was about really spending time getting to know myself. What's so interesting is that we spend a lot of time, whether you're dating or you're starting a new job, like we spend so much time getting to know other people. If you think about going on a date, like we'll ask them questions. Where are you from? What do you enjoy? What do you want to do in the future? What's interesting is humans very rarely do that with themselves. And again, it's that acknowledgement that who you were five years ago might not be who you are today, but you've probably not spent the time or had the space to actually just check in with the version that you are today and be like, wait, even if I wanted to do that five years ago, even if that was important to me two years ago, I don't know if it is now. And giving yourself that permission to keep meeting and changing and integrating different parts of yourself. So the first thing is spend more time alone. Ask yourself questions, get to know yourself. Another thing which we do at the organization a lot is learning. So I study self and identity at Harvard. So there's a lot of interesting scientific research around identity that can validate our experiences or give us language for stuff that happened to us that we think, is that just me? It's, no, there's a lot of people that have gone through this. So learning different things is amazing because every time you learn something new, it physically changes the chemicals and the neurons in your brain. So you're already changing as you learn, but I'm a big advocate for doing stuff. So I think I'm a very intellectual person. I love to learn. I love research people that listen to podcasts, I'm someone that binges podcasts, we can absorb all this knowledge. But if we don't go and do something, not a lot changes. So I think the next thing is after learning or absorbing different content, go and do something. Go and try a new hobby. If you were a kid and you loved playing chess, but you've not played it in 20 years, go and find a chess club and see how that feels, leaning into that. And then the final piece of our framework is discuss. So have these conversations, whether it's going on podcasts, whether it's finding networks and community where other people you can, and again, that's what selfhood exists for is it is a community where people do talk about identity. We talk about experiences we've had. We share the journey that we're on. Because again, when you think about when you were a teenager and you were first figuring out who you were, we talked about ourselves all the time. We were constantly talking about, do I want to study this? Maybe I want to be this when I grow up. And that constant conversation and talking about who you are and what you want either will make you realize as you say something out loud, huh, I thought I wanted to do that. Or I've always told myself I'm someone who is always late, but actually that's not true. Maybe that was true five years ago, but also having other people as well is really cool and hearing other people's experiences and getting them to mirror back how they perceive you. So to summarize, learning something new, spending time with yourself exploring something. So again, it could be exercises that you do that helps with self-awareness, or it could be going and trying a different hobby and then discussing. So talking about it out loud for yourself and also with others. Yeah, really powerful. And an adjacent question I have for you is for, for people like community is really important. And for example, let's say for people that just feel like they were born in the wrong body or the wrong gender or the wrong country, wrong, all these things. And how do they, how do people find a sense of community? Because for me, my community is a community of creators and entrepreneurs. They could be any gender, any race, any sexual preference, anything. It's just, it's like the ideals and the mindset. So how do you, how does one go about to 
find this community to where they fit in, they can thrive and develop a strong sense? That's a good question. And I also want to acknowledge how hard it is when you feel like you don't fit, whether it's in a group, whether it's in your body, whether it's in an identity that has been pushed onto you. Mm. Um, I just want to name that because it's, it's there's actually something called identity trauma, which is constantly feeling like who you are and your identity isn't wanted. And it has huge impacts and people don't talk about it enough. So I want to just acknowledge that if people are going through that, it's really tough. In terms of community, enough that the internet and social media and podcasts like this have reduced the distance to finding more of your people. And I would also get people to think about different communities instead of just one community. Because I think sometimes what happens is when we try and fit all of who we are into one community, that is when there is likely to be friction. Because perhaps maybe, say, one of my identities is being a Black mixed race woman. So there might be community that I really want to lean into that really reinforce and cement me in my Blackness or my womanness or my mixedness. But then I'm also someone that loves research. So when I went and studied at Harvard, that was amazing because then I was around people that also tapped into the the academic part of me and the research part of me. I love running. So again, finding community that I can stretch into running and be around other runners. So I think people, again, it comes back to what we do at Selfhood, which I get is hard, but why we're trying to make it easier is spend time figuring out different parts of yourself, different hobbies, different things that make you who you are. And then maybe go and find multiple communities because again, it gives you different spaces, different experiences, different energy that allows you to lean into different parts of yourself instead of feeling like you have to just reduce yourself into one in order to fit into one community. Um, Yeah, I know. I know friends and colleagues, like some of them, for example, the South Asian counterparts, they grew up in in Alabama and then they literally had to leave and live in New York City or San Francisco to be these big cities to actually find people that just leave this United States because they don't fit with the culture or just the, all of that. Yeah, it's really interesting. Sometimes you just have to pick up and go, <laughs> go and find yourself. I know. I'm a huge advocate for that. Like I, I think environment is huge. I, so our philosophy selfhood is still exploring, right? It's the idea that You don't have to go across the other side of the world to figure out who you are. You can do it right where you are in your life as you are. And that's what we do with our workshops and our exercises. And at the same time, changing environment is so interesting. And you can do it on a big scale like me. Like I have constantly picked up and moved and I love it because every time I do, I meet a different version of myself. But you can also just do it in terms of going and working from a local coffee shop or going in, spending time in a park, right? Putting yourself in different spaces that give you different energies, I think can also start to get you thinking and moving differently, which it's a great help as well. Yeah, fascinating. So we'll end it, we have around five minutes and because I know you founded and started Selfhood, which really is really impactful to help people recover from their identity trauma and develop. And how has this kind of new way of flourishing with nomadism and financial freedom and location freedom helped you? And what advice would you have for people that are still with the kind of the matrix narrative, just nine to five, wake up, go 50 years, all still in a, in a daydreaming state? How, how do you help people wake up to the, to mm. what you- <laughs> It's a good question. I, so the thing I feel right now, and, and you said it, and it's a core value of mine has been for a long time is it's a sense of freedom. So I love that my day are spent honoring like my needs, my intuition. And again, I still have to work, but it might be something as small as maybe there's some days where I want a slower morning and I want to spend time going for a walk or reading or learning in the morning. And it means that then I can work later because I control my hours. It's not like I have to be online at a certain time for 9 a.m. I get that as a luxury and a privilege, but it's something that is really important to me. It's the same with my hobbies. And again, I come back to identity. Like when you start to give yourself permission to be more than just one thing, you create a sense of freedom because it's giving you the permission that, yeah, okay, even if you have to do a nine to five, look at your evenings and your free time. And again, someone in a nine to five that they don't like, but maybe have a mortgage, maybe they're in a situation where they have to stick with it. 
back in the day, maybe you liked playing band. So think about, okay, in the evenings, maybe I'm going to go and start playing in a band to give me at least a sense of freedom over my evenings. So I think it's almost looking at where you are and seeing where can you find moments of freedom? Where can you choose how you show up, do things on purpose? For me, I'm very lucky like lucky and I have worked hard to build the life that I have. And my partner is the same. He's also an entrepreneur. So we can both support each other in that freedom. So again, another thing is maybe finding communities like this one and being around other people that are chasing that freedom, whether it's financial, whether it's identity-based, whether it's a tie. And again, finding them, hearing what they do, hearing their tips and tricks, and also allowing them to inspire you. Because I think sometimes you need to see it in order to believe that it's possible. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It took me, I had to do a lot of country hopping for a year just to find my community and tribe and learn from individuals such as yourself doing fantastic things. For people that are, they're love the listeners, they're, they're corporate, they're high paid and they're corporate, but they may find interest and intrigue in what you're doing. And some of them, they have to wake up and show up and uh, not be their authentic selves. And so what are some common identity challenge in the corporate settings, like you have to be this way and then outside of it, you have to be, you can, how do you navigate that and help people reconcile this dichotomy? Mm -hmm. I've been there. I did 10 years in corporate, like director level. And I spend a lot of time, a lot of my clients are companies or leaders that want to start thinking about how to integrate identities, more identities into the work that they do. So I think the simplest way I can, again, I'm cognizant of time, is I think a lot of what we do when we enter corporate is we reduce ourselves down into our very specific job role, right? Like I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I'm a manager, I'm an executive. And when we do that, we actually create such a subconscious sense of fear because if all I am is a lawyer and I'm clinging to that identity so much, what happens if I get laid off, right? Or what happens if someone new comes in and they're better than me and maybe they're making cuts? And what happens is that controls and dictates how we feel in our life, how we show up. And it reduces a lot of what makes us so unique and special and valuable to the organization down to one thing. A lot of what I do with companies is an experience called integrating identity. So there is a lot of research that shows that the best performing, most innovative, most creative teams are teams with high levels of identity integration, which means that each individual has a higher level of self-awareness in terms of knowing Loads of the different parts, experiences, expertise that they have and support them in integrating that into the work that they do. So say, for example, you are, you work in the creative industry and you are an account manager. So your role is really and truly on paper just to liaise with the clients day in, day out. That's what you do. A lot of people will show up and they will just look at the skills and the experience associated with that very narrow description. That's fine. But what some of the best account managers do is think about what are the other experiences I have, the expertise I have, even if it's outside of the very narrow remit of my job, and how can I integrate that into what I do? So say this account manager loves to illustrate on the side and say they are liaising between account managers and creatives. They might be able to then integrate and think, okay, I know this is what the client wants, but let me put it into an illustration to communicate that with the creatives because that might resonate with them more. That person is going to be better at their job because they are able to be fluid and move into different parts of themselves. So for people listening who are in corporations, if you're in a position to bring in speakers and companies like mine, do so because we can help facilitate that. If not, start thinking about what are the different parts of myself that I'm currently not bringing to my role or not bringing to the organization that perhaps I could start thinking about bringing to the organization that would A, mean I have more fulfillment when I show up and do my work because I'm able to lean into more of myself. I'm not reducing myself down. And B, maybe I start excelling in different areas of the business. And perhaps when I lean into this, I realize actually I really enjoy this function and maybe there's ways I can integrate this into my job more. So again, it comes back to the idea that you can explore right where you are. You don't need to leave your job. It's just thinking about maybe how can I integrate more of myself into my job. Mm, interesting. How can people find out more about you and reach out to you and see the fantastic work that you do and learn from you? So our, our website is just exploring selfhood. There's a contact page on there. So the team will get that. You can reach out that way. 
I'm on LinkedIn. So by all means, shoot me a message. And if you are wanting to explore yourself individually, we're paused, we've paused our individual workshops currently, but a lot of our attention and energy is going into the newsletter. So what it is, it's completely free. Twice a month on a Sunday, we will send you a lesson, a question, and a dare. And essentially what we are doing is we are sending you some way to explore a bit more of yourself. So even if you did nothing else, sign up to the newsletter, two Sundays of the month, spend 15 minutes answering our questions, learning more, talking about it. And by default, you will start to explore and learn more about who you are and yourself. I love that. Really, I think uh, you were the, you know, the second guest that's really talked about identity and developing a strong identity. And uh, for the audience, it was an enlightening conversation and be sure to check out Laura and socials, give them a follow and reach out to her. And thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, Chris. It was a great conversation.